Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 7th of July. India's coronavirus death toll hits 20,000 as infections surge. Protest held against illegal construction of dams in Pakistan administered Kashmir. And Afghan President Ghani seeks regional support for peace. And now for all the details. Death toll from the coronavirus pandemic surpassed 20,000 in India and number of confirmed cases crossed over 719,000 on Tuesday as the South Asian nation pushes ahead with lockdown relaxations. The death rate in the world's third most affected country by coronavirus, however, still remains low. India's death toll from the coronavirus pandemic surpassed 20,000 and case numbers surged to 719,665 on Tuesday as the South Asian nation pushed ahead with relaxations to its almost two-month lockdown. The rate of both new virus infections and deaths are rising at the fastest pace in three months as officials lift a vast lockdown of India's 1.3 billion people. India on Monday overtook Russia as the third most affected country globally, behind the United States and Brazil. But its death rate per 10,000 people is still a low 0.15, compared with 3.97 in the United States and 6.65 in the United Kingdom. It is a matter of concern that the cases in India are now increasing. The, they are increasing by about 20,000 per day. The basic reason for increase of cases, of course, the infection is continuing. The second reason is the testing rate in India has also increased. The testing rate has increased to almost 2.5 lakh to 3 lakh per day. To battle the accelerating cases of the virus, India opened the world's largest temporary COVID-19 hospital with a capacity of 10,000 beds this past weekend in capital New Delhi, which remains the third worst hit region in the country. The reopening of the Indian economy has been sporadic. While domestic travel has been opened up, international flights remain suspended and containment zones, areas identified as most affected by the virus, remain under strict lockdown. The Indian Air Force conducted night operations on Monday at the forward airbase near the Chinese border in India's Ladakh, weeks after a deadly face-off between Indian and Chinese troops in Galwan Valley. China has reportedly begun pulling back troops from along its contested border with India. The Indian Air Force or IAF conducted night operations on Monday at Forward Air Base near Chinese border in India's Ladakh, weeks after a deadly face-off between Indian and Chinese troops. China began pulling back troops from along its contested border with India on Monday, Indian government sources said, following the clash between the two countries in Galwan Valley last month in which 20 Indian soldiers were killed. American and Russian origin aircraft and helicopters, including Chinook, Apache and MiG-29 were seen at the border area as Air Force officers conducted night drills at the forward post near the site of the last month's clash. The night operations have an inherent element of surprise. The Indian Air Force is fully trained and ready to undertake entire spectrum of operations in any environment with the help of modern platforms and motivated personnel. China is yet to confirm whether it suffered casualties in the June 15 face-off in the Galwan Valley. The Indian deaths are the highest along the border in more than five decades, a dramatic escalation that led to weeks of talks between senior military officials on how to ease tensions. At least one terrorist was killed in an encounter in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. 
According to a police official, a joint operation by the Central Reserve Police Force, Indian Army and the local police was launched in Gusu village of Pulwama late on Monday night following inputs about the presence of the terrorists in the area. The search operation turned into an encounter after terrorists opened fire on security forces. Operations were still underway till the last reports came in. Joint operations by security forces have resulted in neutralizing over 100 terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir territory this year. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday unveiled the country's first locally developed ventilator to help frontline medical professionals treat seriously ill COVID-19 patients. This comes at the time when Pakistan has seen a sudden rise in the infection cases after the nationwide lockdown was lifted. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday handed over the first batch of a dozen locally manufactured ventilators to the country's National Disaster Management Authority in the northwestern city of Haripur. This comes at a time when the number of coronavirus cases in Pakistan has increased the demand for ventilators and other essential medical equipment. Pakistan has seen a sudden rise in the infection cases after Prime Minister Imran Khan lifted the nationwide lockdown, saying it was essential to save the economy. Pakistan has $2.1 billion जो इक्विपमेंट है मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट है हर साल बरामद करता है और एक बिलियन डॉलर का हम सर्विस एग्रीमेंट करते हैं जो इस इक्विपमेंट को चलाने के लिए जो कंपनीज के साथ हम करते हैं इस बहुत बड़े इनिशिएटिव के नतीजे में पाकिस्तान के अंदर एक बहुत बड़ी सनत जो है इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक की यानी जो हमारे मेडिकल आलात की जो एक बहुत बड़ी सनत है उसका आगाज होगा और इंशाल्लाह पाकिस्तान को अगले तीन सालों में हम एक बिलियन डॉलर जो कि इंपोर्ट जो है वो बचाएंगे। The first round of ventilators called Safe Vent SP100 were produced by the National Radio and Telecommunication Corporation, a defence and telecommunication equipment manufacturer. There were 234,509 coronavirus cases. And 4,839 deaths in the country as of Tuesday. Moving on, a massive protest was held against China and Pakistan in Pakistan administered Kashmir on Monday over the illegal construction of dams on the Neelam and Jhelum rivers. They expressed concern that the so called development project posed a serious threat to environment in the illegally occupied region. A massive protest rally against China and Pakistan was held in Muzaffarabad, city of Pakistan administered Kashmir on Monday over the illegal construction of dams on the Neelam and Jhelum rivers. The protesters condemned proposed construction of Kohala hydropower project on the Jhelum river and highlighted a hydropower project on the Neelam river has already severely affected life and posed a serious environmental concern in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. They accused that Pakistan and China are violating UN Security Council resolutions by occupying rivers in the illegally occupied region. Recently, an agreement was signed between a Chinese company and the governments of Pakistan and China for the construction of a 1,124-megawatt hydropower project at Kohala on the Jhelum River, costing $2.4 billion. Activists blame Pakistan has lately sanctioned multiple projects in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, which only serve the interests of Islamabad and essentially aim to further suppress and marginalize the locals in the illegally occupied region. In news from Afghanistan, President Ashraf Ghani has stressed on the need for the support of neighboring and regional countries to participate in the reconciliation process in his country. Ghani, during a Kabul-hosted international conference on Afghan peace process, said the support of other countries will help Afghanistan to achieve its goals on peace. 
Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has stressed the need for the support of neighboring and regional countries to participate in the reconciliation process in Afghanistan. Ghani at the opening of an international meeting on strengthening regional consensus for peace on Monday said the support of regional and neighboring countries for regional consensus will help Afghanistan to achieve its goals on peace. On prisoner release, Ghani said that the Afghan government has made big steps with the releases and the Taliban should quit violence and release the Afghan prisoners too. Last Sunday, the Afghan government revealed that one of the main reasons behind the delay in the intra-Afghan negotiations was its refusal to release 597 prisoners out of the 5,000 inmates that were to be freed as part of the US-Taliban agreement signed in the late February. These individuals are accused of serious moral crimes and are on a list that was given to the government by the Taliban. According to the Afghan government, so far 4,015 Taliban prisoners have been released and the process will continue this week. The COVID-19 cases tally in Bangladesh has reached to 165,618 with 2,096 associated deaths. As the country continues to see the trend of one in every five people testing positive for the deadly virus. Bangladesh is the 18th worst affected country in the world right now. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Bangladesh has reached to 165,618 with 2,096 associated deaths as the country continues to see the trend of one in every five people testing positive for the deadly virus. Health authorities in Bangladesh on Monday reported a 22.47% test positivity rate in the last 24 hours. The Directorate General of Health Services said 15,201 samples were collected from suspected COVID-19 patients between Sunday and Monday. Between the same time span, 14,245 samples were tested in 68 authorized labs out of 73, including both government and private across the country. According to World Dormita, a website tracking global COVID-19 figures, Bangladesh remains 18th worst affected country in the world in terms of total confirmed novel coronavirus cases. At a time when wearing face masks is mandatory to contain the spread of coronavirus, a man in India's western Maharashtra province has gone a little more extravagant and got himself a face mask made out of gold. A man in India's western Maharashtra province is weathering the pandemic in style by wearing a face mask made of pure gold. Shankar Kurhare claims that his mask weighs 50 grams and cost him around $3,870 to have it made for him by a jeweller. He believes it will protect him from the novel coronavirus and that small punctures in the mask allow him to breathe properly. <laughs> Notably, it's just the mask that has been made of gold. The threads used to tie the mask are normal threads that have been spared of the golden adventure. Maharashtra, one of India's hardest hit provinces, reported over 211,980 COVID-19 cases and 9,026 deaths as of Tuesday. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.